I'm going to move on to the tack strips. I've got all of the tack strips to put, so that's uh, the header bow, then uh, the second, third bow, the tack strips on the end, and I'm going to have to like modify and make myself, and then the fourth bow, um, tack strip. That one's the multi-layer uh, glue together. Uh, all of that came from uh, the tack strip kit came from National Parts Depot. Covers the front uh, header bow and covers the back fourth bow, the, the stacking. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, and then the uh, second and third bows, I couldn't find anything that is a tack strip meant for that. So I went off I went to eBay and found a size measurement um, that I think is correct. Frankly, I don't remember what it was. I'll throw it up on the screen. I don't remember what the size was that I grabbed, but I think it's even a little too uh, too tall and too wide. So I'll have to trim that to fit. I knew I was going to have to trim to fit, but I'm going to have to trim more than I thought I'd have to. Uh, so we'll mess with that as well. i got to get all of those glued in. I want to at least get that done uh, today. Uh, and get it prepped and ready to start putting in the pads. So I've got the replacements for the rear uh, tack strip, the one that's in the metal. I've got those. I've saved the old ones so I can validate these are the right shape. That was some feedback that I noticed that these uh, these tend to just come out stamped and they don't fit every car. So it's, it's, it's smart to go uh, test fit those. So I do plan on doing that, of course. Then here's the tack strip kit that comes from National Parts Depot. It is three uh, pieces of strip, uh, two of one length, I don't remember what it is, and uh, one of the other. The one of the other goes across the center of the, uh, of the bow. If you look right there, it has that little bump. That's where that, um, where that uh, center one starts and is a little bit higher. Then the front tack strip is this thin one here, and you see that's kind of the side profile of it. All of them in the kit are the same profile, you know, uh, uh, I guess that's width and height, just they have different lengths. Um, and then here's the one that I bought off of eBay. You can kind of see that. I believe it's three eighths by a half or something like that, uh, if I remember correctly. And this is, so just to kind of give you a comparison of, there we go, give you a comparison of the two different sizes. So the reason I ordered that, that size, the three eighths, I think it's a three eighths by half it's because I wanted it to fit into this space uh, and be uh, good and snug. So you can see if I bring the angle around here that 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 feels like it's the right width on the bottom. Uh, and then I'll just have to like make you know, take these top corners off so I can slide it in there all the way up uh, and, and glue it. So that's what I'm hoping to be able to do. I can't find any real documentation or or direction on what to do with the second and third bows. I guess most folks have the where there's a welded in tab and you can use screws to hold them down. Frankly, I'd prefer that so there's not staples there. Um, but I, I just don't have a choice. So um, I think I'll start with the header bow and, and start to get it glued uh, and then maybe move to the back bow and get it glued and then uh, and then do the centers. I don't have enough clamps to hold it all, all at the same time. So I might not be able to do this all today. So we'll see. I'll take it one step at a time. All right. I've applied contact cement to both that inner section there and this guy we're just letting it set up uh, and then we will get it up there and clamp it I'd already test fit it and ensure that it, it is actually you know about uh, that much longer than any span either side so you see I didn't just for handling purposes didn't take the contact cement all the way to the very end because I know it will overhang and I'll trim to fit so uh, I'll trim to fit on each side either side so I want it to go just that far out so we'll then uh, apply it in here and clamp it as we go. And then I'll go back through and drill out the five thirty seconds holes. Mine has 15 of them all the way around um, that I'll drill out and 
go ahead and put those rivets in. All right, this is uh, glued in and riveted in. So it's all set there. Like I said, this will be trimmed to fit uh, on the ends. So the ends overhang a little bit. Um, I used these rivets, so aluminum, so they won't rust. And they're a quarter by 532nd. And so the hole uh, drilled through the plastic is 532nd. They fit perfectly. Uh, it worked out well. So now this just has to completely dry and that'll be ready. So I've started working on this, profiling this thing out, trying to, all right, now I'm just using a bench grinder, trying to grind the the profile in that I need. Uh, and it's 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 going okay, but it's super tedious considering I got to get down that whole length to be able to slide that guy all the way in. So let's see how well that goes. All right, so I just finished this one up. Uh, I went ahead and drilled out these two holes all the way through where the uh, screws come through for a couple of reasons. One, I needed to relieve it on this side, right? So that way these would pop through because it was pushing up on it and, and I want that relief there. But also went ahead and just went all the way through because it's not like I can really drive a staple there anyway. So it would be nice to know exactly where those screws are. Um, and I don't have to worry about guessing for that when I'm driving a staple. But um, let me show you here kind of... I thought I'd have to slide it in from the end. Uh, but the end is actually crimped a little bit. Which makes it really hard to slide it in from the end. So you can... Get it just skinny enough to where you can push it past the kind of fact that both those walls go that way and then it goes in there so with uh with contact cement come on focus with contact cement i think that's going to work perfectly the uh you know this end might be a bit too long but it's going to lay below this trough anyway and then this comes right to the end i might uh, you know, just razor blade, take that right off so it matches that same um, uh, curve as the metal on the end there. But otherwise, once this glues in, I think that's going to be perfect. So now I've got to do it three more times. Alright, I got all of these done. I took the better part of my day because I had to grind to get every single one of those to fit right. But again, drilled the holes out for those bolts so I get it nice and sug, snug. I get the profile that I want all along that edge that, that is the same height as the bar. So with the pad coming in, it's going to fit perfectly. So that's exactly what I was looking for. I still need to trim out these edges so they're nice and flat on each one of these. Not just so they'll get... Get that guy in focus. Trim out that edge so it'll match the metal. Um, so it's a nice smooth transition for the top right there. So I'm going to take each of these back out and, and go back with contact cement and glue them in. And then we can start on the back. Alright, so I've got uh, the last little bits here uh, drying. I've put glue in the end of each one of these. Uh, and have these drying. Now they're a pretty snug fit. So I'm going to try and use these interesting pliers with the pads to help press them in quickly. Um, and I'm going to put them in a little early um, so it's a little more uh, tacky and, and less like immediate bond uh, from the glue. So that way I can get it down recessed in there. I don't know if that's the right thing, but that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the top, just an update on the, the header. That's all uh, done. It's all riveted across. Nice snug fit. Uh, turned out really nice. So, by the way, I'm just using the uh, Weldwood uh, DAP brand. Just the standard uh, contact cement. That's what I'm using here. Now, on bow number four, there is a different glue I'm using, uh, as recommended uh, by that uh, convertible top. Uh, Bible, so um, we'll see if that's that's any better. Oh, just waiting for that glue to set up.
All right, and so you can see uh, what I did to get these created, and they're real solid on uh, most of them. The front, the second bow, it worked out just perfect. Um, they, uh, they are nice and snug with contact cement. They're not moving at all. For the third bow, I get a little bit of a shift, and I don't know if you can make that out. Yeah, you can make that out. I get a little bit of a shift in this one and in that one on both sides of the third bow. And my assumption is that I just made this a little skinnier than it should, the actual tack strip. And so I get a little bit of that wobble. It's in there solid outside of that. So I think I'm going to leave it, but I would have rather used that Cicaflex because that would have that would have gotten rid of that gap uh, and made it nice and solid. So didn't do that. Uh, but I am going to use that Cicaflex in here. And so here's that step I was talking about where you're going to run the first down into each one of these uh, stirrups. And then up here will be the second one so that way it, it matches uh, matches that lip. So I'm going to start working on that now. Alright. So with these in, they're a little bit long. I'll have to trim where that stirrup is. The Only one of them can fit in the stirrup. So I'll have to trim that one and then trim the top one back just a little bit more. And then you see this is just slightly too long. Let me take you to the other side so you can kind of see what it's supposed to look like. Uh, basically, that's what it would look like, right? So I've got this one that sits down all the way in the, and bottoms out in the stirrup. This one's going to go right over the top of it and bottom out at the top of the stirrup. Then up here, right where you see this uh, go up, that's where this will also go up. And I'm going to um, cut this to where it's a little bit more gradual up to that and not such a uh, rigid transition. But really that's the difference between the, uh, that's where the pad is going to sit in over here on this and then the rest of it sits on top of that. So you can see this ends up being more or less flush on each of these and you'll see that transition across. So that's, that's what we're going to do. All right. So took off the top piece there and you're not going to be able to tell, but what I did was you can kind of see a score mark there. It's not going to focus. There's a score mark. There you go. Score mark on the uh, edge of this that kind of, that I went down the, the bow right there to, to, with a, with an awl and just did a little score mark because I found the, the bench grinder takes away this material quite nicely. And so I'll be able to just kind of very, kind of perfectly match that, uh, that shape that I just scored. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay. Again, nothing spectacular, but this is now the, the one below it is trimmed to fit right in the spur. This one is trimmed to fit right up against the spur. And then this one is trimmed to match that profile uh, that you have there. So you get a nice clean match on the profile. Again, your pad is going to sit over here and here and here and here. Uh, and so that's why you have that, that shape going across there. And then the top will go over the pad and then all the way across uh, this section here. So now that those are all trimmed to fit, I have to rough everything up. I'm going to rough up both sides of, uh, of the uh, longer ones, the bottom side of, of the shorter one, and then rough up the inside of the bow here to make sure we get good adhesion. The way I'm going to do that is just a scotch pad, uh, just to get a nice, you know, just rough them up enough where they're not shiny anymore. And just so you get an idea of kind of the length difference, here's the top one, middle one, and bottom one. You know, the top and bottom, or the top and middle one are just slightly different. I went ahead and labeled mine before I pulled them out. Uh, that way I don't accidentally have any confusion putting them back in. But now I'm going to take some scotch Bright and just start uh, scuffing them up. Okay, both sides roughed up on A. That is the bottom one, A. Uh, most of the top side and all the way over to like right here. You can't really make it on the video. So the other side is roughed up. You can kind of see it there, the difference in being roughed up and not. 
uh, and then only the bottom side and sides of this are roughed up. I did rough up the sides of all of these just in case any of that uh, glue comes up over in the trough. Now I also roughed up all three sides of the trough and then wiped everything down with some wax and tar remover and let it dry. Now it's time to um, glue. I have no idea what is too much for this. That's probably way too much, but it's gonna bleed over the sides and I'm gonna keep applying as much as I need as I go from one layer to the next. All right, that's all glued up. Uh, immediate feedback on the uh, that Sikaflex. Uh, pretty good thick bead seems to do it, but you've got to press all that out and, it, and it's wrapping around the edges and you got to make sure you use a lot of force to do it. I actually used uh, one of these wood clamps and just kind of clamped down as I went. There were actually a couple of high spots that I had to keep uh, keep clamping and, and making sure that all the glue pressed out into the sides like I wanted. You could probably go thinner uh, than what I did, the thinner bead than I did, or uh, spread the bead maybe with a brush before you uh, actually put the, the tack strip in there. Uh, I opted to just run one thick bead and then uh, cram it all down in there. Uh, and I, it rolled over the sides nicely like I wanted. Um, so it got up around the sides and the ends. Uh, everything looks good. I'll give you a close-up. So you can see kind of the light reflecting off of where it is kind of bubbled up around the outsides of that. And then this is where I was talking about the, you know, the adhesive is already set up where it won't. Sorry, guys. It won't focus. There you go. So we'll look at it again tomorrow. Let me get this other side show you what I'm talking about. We'll look at it again tomorrow just to see how the rest of that turned out. So the only thing is the uh, the glue sets up fairly quickly, actually. Like as you're pressing it out, uh, the adhesive uh, sets up quickly and you don't necessarily have to clamp it the whole way around so long as you've got a good grip uh, and you force that uh, all that excess uh, adhesive out of there. Uh, it seems to be staying without issue. Like I said, it did go up around the sides as well, and it's filled in all of that quite nicely. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. What I'll see tomorrow after it completely sets up, I may come back and redo uh, the number three bow with that product. I'll have to pull these strips out and clean up all the um, contact adhesive, uh, which isn't uh, that big a deal to do, and then um, and then come back with that uh, Sikaflex maybe. Uh, the only other thing is as it uh, as it was setting up and I was pushing it out, it did get on the top um, and, and made a little bit of a mess there. And it sets up so quick I couldn't even wipe it off with a paper towel because it set up that quickly. But no big deal, you're not going to see that anyway. And so if it at any point is not smooth enough or it looks like it would be viewable through the top, then I'll, then I'll uh, adjust that. But I don't see that being an issue at all. So, uh, I think that's all I'm going to do tonight. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.